Hi everybody, TJ Mac Vintage Cards here doing a profile of the 1986 Topps football set. And I've uh, selected 18 cards to look at from this set. And these um, are all stars or Hall of Famers. So I believe all these are actually Hall of Famers that we're looking at today. Uh, the grades, as you can see here, uh, vary from grade 8 to uh, grade 9. And uh, even some 8.5s in here. I got a few 8.5s in the set. I love that eight and a half grade. That's uh, you know you get uh, closer to the eight price with uh, close to nine quality. <laughs> so it's good stuff. And we'll just go through and take a closer look here. It's a 396 card set. Uh, pretty condition sensitive with the with the green borders, uh, so they can be pretty tough to get uh, in a in a higher grade. And here's the uh, Walter Payton. Uh, he finished fourth in rushing in 1986 with 1,333 yards and 12 touchdowns. His last card would come a year later in 1987. I believe he had a, like a record breaker card or a career highlight in 1988, but this would be uh, his last regular issue was 1987. And then you got Mike Singletary here. So continuing that great middle linebacker tradition in Chicago, starting with uh, Dick Buckus. Got Dan Marino. Uh, Marino led the league that year with 4,746 uh, yards passing which was 600 yards more than second place Jay Schrader. He had 44 touchdown passes, 19 more than second place Ken O'Brien. When Marino retired in 1999, he was the number one um, in passing with 61,361 yards, nearly 10,000 ahead of second place John Elway. Now Marino ranks sixth in all time in passing. He had 420 touchdowns, which was 78 ahead of second place Fran Tarkenton. And again, he ranks uh, six in that category now as well. Here's uh, Marcus Allen. Howie Long, uh, certainly a Hall of Fame defensive end, now known for uh, the Fox uh, pregame shows. We got Eric Dickerson. He was the 1986 Offensive Player of the Year. Um, he scored 11 touchdowns, and he led the league with 1,821 yards rushing and 2,026 yards from scrimmage. Now, the funny thing with Dickerson is he fumbled 12 times that year, which was twice as many as any other running back did that season. This past season in the NFL, Ezekiel Elliott led the league with six fumbles, and that made a lot of noise that he was fumbling so much. In today's game, Dickerson would be a lot of trouble if he, if he fumbled 12 times in a season, in spite of how good he really was. Um, he, he was a five-time All-Pro and a, and a four-time rushing champion. But I thought I would share that because he was Offensive Player of the Year and he fumbled the ball 12 times. Uh, fumbles um, were more common back in those days than they are now. Um, not really sure why. That's something I'll have to look into. But you see players did fumble a lot more back in those days uh, than what you see nowadays. Here's uh, John Elway. Tony Dorsett. Here's a great, love this card, of uh, Lawrence Taylor LT, this, this look he has on his face. It's great, great. And he was the 1986 NFL MVP. He was the first defensive player to do so since Alan Page in 1971. He also won his third defensive player of the year that year, which would be his last. He had 20 and a half sacks as he powered the Giants defense to a Super Bowl where they beat the Broncos 39 to 20. Now, Lawrence Taylor, he was just fearless on the field and Bill Belichick said that he had no regard for his body, which helped him be as great as he was. Now, before Lawrence Taylor, the middle linebacker, that was the focal point of a defense with uh, guys like Ray Nitschke and Dick Buckus and Sam Huff. But LT, he really raised the importance of the outside linebacker. He was fast enough to cover a receiver, um, strong enough to, to uh, take down a powerful running back, and he certainly was agile enough to break through a line and get to a quarterback for a sack. Uh, what is interesting about this, I was looking for a good story on LT, and I found one that was told by Buzz Peterson, who was Michael Jordan's roommate uh, when he was uh, playing basketball in North Carolina. And he believed that Lawrence Taylor was the only player that Michael Jordan ever feared. And here's what he had to say about this. He said, there is one guy that I always thought, and I know to this day, um, I, I don't think Michael would admit it, but I swear that he had a little bit of fear of LT. And uh, LT was a phenomenal athlete. He could guard on a basketball court east or west as quick as anybody. He could jump. He had big hands, and he was a bit crazy. So whenever he played basketball with Michael, it was LT who said, I wanted to guard him. He, he wanted to play on Michael Jordan. 
And he could, he could see Michael, this is what Bud, Buzz Peterson said, he could see Michael saying in the back of his mind, shoot, I better be careful with this guy. And, and like I said, LT was always looking to guard him. So I thought that was kind of interesting that, that um, he really believed that Jordan had a fear of LT just because he was so unpredictable. Here you got Joe Montana. He was the comeback player of the year in 1986. I believe he was injured in 85, leading to the comeback. And then here's the card here, the Jerry Rice. This card is, um, you know, one of those cards that's just been going crazy in value lately. I don't talk about values too much in my videos, but I just cannot believe, you know, how, what's happening with some of these cards, and, and this is one of them. But I'm glad I got it when I did, and uh, it's certainly one of uh, my prized additions in my collection. I've always loved this card, and definitely can make a case he's he may be the greatest player of all time and you got Steve Largent here and moving down to Dan Fouts Reggie White Reggie White um, he was third in sacks that year with 18 in 1986 and he's second all-time in sacks with 198 and I'll just scroll over here to Bruce Smith. Bruce Smith is his, his rookie card. He's first all-time in sacks with 200, and he had uh, 15 that season. Those two are head and shoulders above everybody else. I believe it's Kevin Green who's third with 160 sacks. So definitely two of the greatest defensive ends of their time right there. And here's the rookie card of uh, Steve Young in his uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers uniform. There's also a USFL card of him, but this is his uh, NFL rookie card. So the cool thing about this, though, I love this story that I, I found on Steve Young. Look at his face mask, like how big it is. Look how far it hangs below his face. I want you to just keep that image in mind for a second. You know, he was always remembered as a great with the 49ers, but some may forget that his NFL career started with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where he played his first two seasons in 1985 and, of course, 1986. He threw 11 touchdowns and 21 interceptions, and he was 3-16 and as a starter with the Buccaneers. Now, the biggest mistake, this is what Steve Young had to say, is I, I would copy Jim McMahon with my long face mask when I went pro in Tampa Bay. I finally took it off because Joe Montana, he didn't have a long face mask. And then when I turned right, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't hit my shoulder pads anymore. It was a stupid face mask. So the face mask was the problem. The shoulder pads were always okay. The biggest mistake I ever made was that I copied Jim, Ma Jim McMahon by wearing that long face mask. So Steve Young actually blames some of his uh, poor performance on Tampa Bay on that awful long face mask in this picture. <laughs> then we got uh, Warren Moon here. This is his second uh, year um, NFL issue in 1985. I know he has some CFL cards. There's uh, the great from Cootstown um, University, uh, Andre Reed. He was uh, one of the Bills finds in the later rounds in the draft, and he's a Hall of Famer now. And here is Bruce Smith again. Two great uh, players that ultimately led the Buffalo Bills to those four Super Bowls, along with Jim Kelly and Thurman Thomas. So we'll just take one more scroll through of the 1986 Topps football set. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to uh, sharing more of my collection with you in the future. And I appreciate everybody who's commenting and, and the likes. I really do um, appreciate it, and I do respond to every single one because um, what fun is it if you don't have people that comment and, and give their thoughts on your videos and things like that. So I, I do appreciate it, and um, everybody take care.